A European Airlines plane, namely Atrian 800 flew from Paris to Dubai. Since the plane was about to pass through the turbulence zone, all the passengers were asked to sit down and fasten their seat belts, but suddenly the plane dropped drastically and an accident occurred. <laughs> Elsewhere, there was a black box expert named Matthew Vasseur who was known to have a flawless hearing ability. He worked for the BEA, a Civil Safety Aviation Investigation Bureau whose job is to investigate unusual air accidents. One day, the office was very busy because there was a new plane crash of Atrian 800 with 300 passengers and 16 crew members on board. The flight route was from Paris to Dubai. And the location of the fall was in the mountains on Haute Savoy. To investigate the cause of the accident, a chief investigator named Victor Pollock asked another staff named Balson to help him, even though all this time, it was Matthew who often worked with Victor. After that, Matthew took a special investigation suitcase to give to Balson, but when he was about to give it, he accidentally scratched Victor's car with the suitcase, causing it to scuff up. The car has a security camera and it was sure that Matthew's face was seen in the footage. After that, Matthew met his wife Noemi Vasseur and her boss, Xavier Renault, at a party. Noemi worked for an airplane computer network company named Pegasus Security. Later, on their way home, they talked about the Atrian 800 crash where before the incident occurred, the pilot had lost contact with the air traffic control unit, commonly called ATC. Meanwhile, the customs people had brought the black box from the Atrian 800 plane. The black box itself has two parts, namely the FDR and the CVR. Flight Data Recorder or FDR contains records of technical data during a flight, such as the plane's altitude, speed, engine power, and others in the form of graphs or transcripts, while the Cockpit Voice Recorder or CVR is the part that records the conversation in the cockpit which has four channels, namely the conversation that is connected to the speaker, the conversation in the cockpit, the conversation of the pilot with the ATC traffic controller, and the atmosphere of the aircraft such as the engine or the weather. At that time, Victor and his team were about to open the CVR and would be watched live by Matthew from the office. After opening it with great care, the CVR device was immediately cleaned, the recording file was downloaded, and would be investigated by Victor. The next day, Matthew was called by the chief director of BEA named Philippe Renier who said that Victor had disappeared somewhere while Belson was also having trouble analyzing the black box and because at 7 p.m., there would be a press conference to discuss the contents of CVR, Renier asked Matthew for help to analyze it with Belson. He carefully investigated the CVR, even the slightest noise or rustling due to the tangled reply cable can be heard by him. After listening to the conversation recorded from the CVR, turned out the pilot and co-pilot had a conversation with the ATC, then one of the flight attendants named Jean came to bring some food. Later when Jean entered the cockpit again, there was the sound of another footstep entering the cockpit. After that, the only thing that could be heard were rustling sounds and only the pilot's voice was heard at the end of the recording when the plane was about to crash. Matthew tried to concentrate more to get more details from the record. He even asked Balson to stop stomping his foot so he could hear the recording better. To clear up the sound of the recording, Matthew tried various ways and finally, the voice of a male passenger was heard shouting Allahu Akbar. Matthew then held a press conference regarding his investigation according to his analysis, there was an intruder that managed to enter the cockpit right after the flight attendant entered it and the door was still open. The analysis was not supported by any evidence to say that the intruder was a terrorist. The next morning, the news broadcasted an alleged passenger who had infiltrated the cockpit, a man from Egypt who was an extremist. Matthew's expertise and success in analyzing the CVR made Rainier appoint him as the chief investigator to replace his superior, Victor, because, till that day, Victor had not yet been seen. Later that noon, Matthew went to a man whose wife was one of the victims of the flight accident. He claimed to have a voice message from his wife saying that the plane was very chaotic and everyone was screaming until the plane crashed. Borrowing the husband's cell phone to check the voicemail from his wife, Matthew saw that the voicemail was from 7.56 minutes in the morning. After checking the incident, which happened at 7.53 in the morning, he concluded that the message was impossible due to it being sent three minutes after the plane crashed. The discrepancy was immediately conveyed to R. However, according to Rainier, there could be a time error between the internet that delivered the voicemail and the flight radar because of the considerably narrow time gap. Rainier said that an error like that was natural but Matthew couldn't let it slide and has become increasingly suspicious and obsessed with the case. 
Whenever and wherever he went, he always had the recording with him. He even went to investigate the plane remnant that has been secured. He checked on every day of the passenger, the photos they uploaded to Facebook, and kept listening to the CVR. Matthew's incredible ability to focus could make it seem as if he was on the plane. The Egyptians who were suspected of being intruders were seen. However, it turned out that he was not suspicious at all. Matthew's suspicion grew bigger. Not satisfied with what he could find from the CVR, he went to Victor's office and looked for more evidence that he could have gathered from the case. When he checked Victor's desk, he found a password as well as Victor's home address. After that, he went straight to that address. When he got there, Victor was nowhere to be seen. He decided to enter the house by climbing over the fence. All doors and windows were shut closed and the only thing he could think was to break through the window's glass. When he entered, he immediately screened the rooms and found Victor's laptop in one of them. Fortunately, he took a photo from the notebook on Victor's desk at the office where the laptop's password was written. But, after searching for some evidence on the laptop, he couldn't find any files related to the case. He didn't have any reason to stay there since there was nothing that could help him with the case, but when he was about to go home, he saw Victor's car in the garage and remembered that the car had a dash cam in it. He managed to find the car key and opened the car to retrieve the memory card from the dash cam to look for evidence there. When he was looking at the videos, a dog suddenly surprised him. Turned out it was Victor's neighbor's dog. Matthew then asked the neighbor about Victor's whereabouts but to no avail, the neighbor hadn't seen him since yesterday. Later when Matthew returned home, he checked back the dashcam footage where he saw Victor who came home late on October 11th, just three days after the plane crash. Besides the fact that Victor stopped in the middle of the road, there was nothing else suspicious from the footage, until when he rechecked the footage from September 30th, around 10pm, Matthew saw from the footage that Victor met the man behind Pegasus, Xavier. After he did further investigation, he found out that Pegasus Security Company sold their security system to European Airlines and made its first debut on their plane, Atrian 800, the one that crashed. He then immediately asked one of his colleagues, Samir Jellab, to investigate why the pilot couldn't handle the plane and to find if there was any sign of error, especially with the MHD generator. After that, Matthew went to pick up his wife. He asked his wife about the safety of Pegasus' security system, but Noemi said that the system had gone through several tests and was certified for safety. On the other hand, Xavier found out that Matthew had been suspecting his company. He then asked Matthew to meet and told him directly that the system was working fine and he shouldn't be suspecting Pegase. Matthew then showed him the dashcam footage he found from Victor's car that showed him and Victor meeting on top of a building, but Xavier didn't budge. He told Matthew that he and Victor were working on a project. He even cornered Matthew for suspecting him and questioning his sanity after hearing the CVR recording non-stop. Suddenly, the noise affected Matthew and made him lose control. His head was filled with loud noises and he immediately left Xavier. That night, when Noemi was sleeping, Matthew secretly snooped into her laptop to find data about Pegase. He then found the document about Atrian 800 and immediately copied it to his flash drive. He then reported the document to Rainier the next day, but unfortunately, after leaking the information to Rainier, Xavier found out about the information leakage and since the leaked info was from Noemi's laptop, Xavier fired her. Noemi who found out that her husband had been stealing confidential data from her laptop and leaking it to the public went mad and blamed him for it. Matthew apologized because he didn't expect the data to be leaked to the public. He also admitted that he really needed the data to solve the mystery of Atrian 800's crash case and to prove that the recording from the CVR was all wrong. The data leakage brought down their marriage. Matthew then went to his office to calm down, but when he was at the parking lot, he saw a black car following him, he then dared himself to open the car and found Victor's dead body covered in blood. Turned out it was just a dream. He was woken up by Samir who then invited him to test the MHD system which he suspected to be the cause of the plane crash, but after undergoing several tests, no error was found and the results showed that the system was working as it should. Matthew kept trying to figure out the error but to no avail. He was so stressed he began slamming the screens. To calm down for a while, Matthew stayed in his brother's place. He went to the park to accompany his niece to play with his drone when suddenly, a group of teenagers hijacked the drone and took control of it. Hello? 
That incident made him realize that Atrian 800's system was not undergoing an error but was hijacked by someone. Matthew then returned to meet Xavier to discuss the cause of the accident which may be caused by someone hijacking the system. Hearing that Xavier told him that their well-advanced system was not impenetrable by any kind of hacking and it was a mistake. After that, Matthew went to visit his journalist friend named Laura to tell her about his suspicion about someone that might have hijacked the plane control. Laura told him that his accusation didn't have any strong evidence to support it and there was only a single person that could do it, which was David Keller, a former Pegasi employee who attempted it a year ago and was arrested shortly after. He had finished his sentence in jail but was nowhere to be seen since then. After finding out about David Keller, Matthew went straight back to Facebook to look at the photos that Atrian 800's passenger uploaded and found a man that coincidentally had the same appearance from one of the photos. He then looked at the passenger's name list on board but couldn't find David Keller on it. Adding more irregularities to the case. Matthew then met Noemi to ask for her help because he had a lot of evidence, but Noemi, who was already fed up with her husband's behavior, didn't care and left him. Not only that but Rainier was also forced to transfer Matthew because he involved too much suspicion instead of using facts. He followed his instincts without any evidence to support his theory. He still couldn't find the red string to the case until finally, Matthew saw a video of the helicopter crash that Victor and he investigated before the Atrian 800's incident. The data was saved on the same day when Victor went home late on October 11th, even though it was clearly the last time Matthew saved it was on October 8th which means that Victor might deliberately give a hint from the video because only the two of them had access to the laptop. When the sound was tweaked, Matthew suddenly heard a series of numbers from the sounds which later translated as a coordinate point. When Matthew got there, it turned out that the location was a lake nearby Victor's house. With a boat that leaned there, he went to the exact coordinate point which was in the middle of the lake. He then jumped into the water and found something unexpected. The original CVR belonged to Atrian 800. It turned out that Victor had deliberately hidden it. He then went straight to Victor's house to find out what was inside the CVR. The day when Atrian 800 had its flight, David Keller was one of the passengers there. He was there to clean his reputation and to prove how bad Pegasus' security was. He used a laptop that he secretly plugged into an adapter below his seat. Initially, he intended to hack the flight route just to show how bad the security is, but somehow, he couldn't control his laptop and an error that affected the system occurred. He couldn't cancel the hacking and the plane lost control. The plane's speed decreased drastically. There was nothing David Keller could do but surrender to his fate because the plane was about to crash into the mountain. Besides the original recording of CVR, Victor also combined a video of his self-confession. Turned out, Victor deliberately didn't let Matthew get involved with the investigation because he knew that Matthew was the only one that can help him to uncover the crime that Xavier had done, proven by how he could find the evidence from the instructions that Victor secretly left behind for him. In his confession video, Victor admitted that years ago, Xavier had bribed him to get information regarding errors in Pegasus' devices. And later in Atrian 800 crash case, Xavier knew that the reason behind the incident was David Keller. To cover the truth behind the incident, and to make sure that nobody knew about how bad Pegasus' security system was, he deliberately deleted David Keller from the passenger list. Then, Xavier threatened to ruin Victor's career if he didn't want to help him to falsify the CVR. Turned out, the Muslim terrorist was nothing but a lie to cover the truth. Victor was forced to manipulate the CVR to save Pegasus' reputation because Xavier knew that if the public found out about how bad Pegasus' security system is, it was certain that he would immediately go bankrupt. Even the man that claimed had a voicemail from his wife from the plane crash was paid to give false evidence. Victor had admitted his mistake and hoped that Xavier could be caught soon. Victor's whereabouts were still unknown, whether he was still alive or dead. Shortly thereafter, Matthew heard voices from some people outside of the house. For safety, he decided to immediately transfer the file online. All the electricity was turned off except for the electricity in Victor's office. Right after he hid, the person looking for him entered the house. Since the transfer had not been completed and Matthew was getting cornered, he tried to avert the people's attention from him by turning on the CVR inside the office. He managed to distract the men, and finally, the transfer process was finally complete. He rushed to leave the place but unfortunately, the intruder from earlier had installed a device in his car which was able to hack into his car's system remotely, resulting in him not being able to control his car, causing his death from a high-speed car crash.
Long story short, Noemi who was still devastated by the death of her husband attended the release event of Pegasus' new AI technology, but suddenly, when Xavier was introducing the technology in front of everyone, Victor's confession video was shown on the big screen behind him. It was also sent to all the cell phones of the journalists there. It turned out that Matthew had transferred the original CVR file and Victor's confession to his wife. At that very moment, Xavier was arrested. Matthew's effort to uncover the case was finally came to the end. The truth had been told and Xavier was arrested. Sadly, Noemi regretted not trusting her husband, 